Alright guys, welcome back to another episode and today I'm going to start a three part series on how to crank for bass. Mainly, you know, it's a more of a large mouth, small mouth kind of deal. Around me it is. But I'm going to do the three parts. One is, the first video is going to be about the setups you guys need. The rods, the reels, the line, you know, that kind of stuff to help you, you know, fish this bait properly. And the second video are going to be the types of baits you use. And the third video is we're going to put them together. And I'm going to show you guys how to use it out on the water. But I have three rod and reel setups you guys can choose from. These are my three. These are what work for me. Um, you guys, if you want to check them out, I'll leave links down in the description below. Um, you know, I like these rod and reel setups. This is what I use when I, when I crank these smaller type crankbaits. What kind of crankbaits are we using? Uh, these are the smaller kind of crankbaits. You know the crankbaits that dive anywhere from 6 inches to 12 foot is usually what I use these for. Anything deeper then I break out my deep cranking setup. But once again, these smaller crankbaits you want to use smaller, lighter gear. So on the first setup I have a Temple Fork Pacemaker 7 foot medium parabolic action rod. That was a mouthful. Um, the reason why you want the parabolic action is, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but it bends all the way back to the last guy right here. And what that allows is it allows that bait, or I'm sorry, it allows that fish to inhale that bait and load up on the rod without you tearing the lure and the treble hooks out of the fish's mouth. All these rod and reels, besides the last one I'm going to show you, have this parabolic action. Um, this one right here is just so happens to be a composite cranking rod. Now, you will hear composite and you'll hear glass in this video. I'm not a rod guru, but the composite, I like it for, you know, the warmer water applications. Um, I feel like it, it's a little bit more stiff than a, than a glass rod. And on this 7 foot temp fork, I have a Lou's BB1 Pro Series in the 6 4 to 1 gear ratio. I do not like going any faster than a 6.4 to 1 gear ratio. I'd actually go slower if I could to a 6.2, a 5.8, a 5.4. Um, the slower, I wouldn't say necessarily the better, but it, it, it's more of a fatigue thing. It also allows you not to overwork that crankbait. Because when I use these crankbaits, it's usually in a pre-spawn pattern. The fish are kind of lethargic and everything, so they're not wanting anything blazing by them 70 miles an hour. And I also have that paired up with either 10 or 12 pound copolymer, monofilament, fluorocarbon, whichever line you prefer, as long as it's in that 10 to 12 pound range. Um, sometimes I do go to 14. That just depends if I'm in really heavy cover and you know the size of fish that I'm targeting. Um, but mainly, I, I don't have any issues out of 10 or 12 pound. Uh, as long as you get your drag set right and you play the fish, you'll most of the time get them in the boat. Granted, you are playing with treble hooks, so you will lose a lot of fish doing this. But with the parabolic action, the, the smaller line and everything, you can play that fish and hopefully you won't lose that fish as much. Now, second is basically just like the first setup, but this is a glass cranking rod setup. This is basically a freaking noodle. This is a Dixie Custom Rod 7 foot X glass cranking. And I also have one of their reels paired up with it. It's a 6 4 to 1 gear ratio reel. Once again, like I said, if I can go slower, I would. Um, 10 pound copolymer. I use P line copolymer. Um, with glass cranking rods, I do not like going above 12. I feel like it. It, it, it's too overpowering for a glass cranking rod because a glass cranking rod has, it's like I said, it's a noodle and it has so much more bend. It's bending almost all the way to right here. And a glass cranking rod is, once again, so much lighter and so much more, uh, it has a lot more bend to it. You don't want to, you know, try to overpower the fish because there's a bug in my way. You don't want to overpower that fish because it will rip the treble hooks out. And lastly, for you guys that don't necessarily want to go out and pay for a certain cranking setup, bait caster cranking setup. You guys can use the old egg beater, the old fairy one. What do you want to call it? Just a seven foot medium action spinning rod and reel. Uh, once again, you want to keep in those slower gear ratios, those six fours, those five fours. The slower the better because you do not want to overwork that crankbait. I can't stress that enough in this whole series of videos that I'm about to do. Get out of here, bugs. And with a spinning setup, I would typically stay with the really light lines, the eight to maybe even 10 pound line. Um, this right here, I have a braid backing on it. Um, 
when, if you are using braid backing, make sure you have a cast and a half to two cast worth of fluorocarbon or copolymer line, whichever line you're using. That will uh, help get the crankbait down there and let it work properly, let it do its action that it's supposed to be doing. But those are my cranking setups for these smaller type crankbaits. Once again, I got a seven foot composite cranking rod. I got a seven foot glass cranking rod, both of them in the medium action. And I have a seven foot spinning rod setup. Um, if this is not a parabolic action, it does not have the moderate tip, but it doesn't have a lot of backbone. And that is the main thing in a cranking setup is something that doesn't have a lot of backbone. So you will not tear those treble hooks out of those fishes or that way you can allow them to inhale it and eat the bait. But like I said, this is part number one to a three part series. I hope I can see you guys in the next episode. Um, I will link it at the very end and it'll be in the description when I get that video out. Also in the description there will be links to all these rod setups that you guys want to look at or buy. They'll be in the order of how I talked about them. So if you guys want to check that out, go down in the description. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out all my social media links down below and until next time, catch them big.